probably my favorite. I was able to get that really, really nice reflective shine on it. Um, so yeah, you guys are right. This will look really good. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So we're back, and it feels good to be back. And even in the time that I wasn't working on this car, I was still planning a bunch of stuff to do to this car, and got some really, really cool stuff coming, and I'm really excited to show you, but it's gonna have to wait, because it's not here yet. Um, but nonetheless, what better way to get back than with a highly requested video, which is gonna be how to remove, disassemble, and custom paint your front Ford emblem. So here's the emblem right here, and I did paint this way, 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 way back when, when I first got this car. And because of that, I didn't actually know how to go about it properly, so it is chipping and whatnot. But it does give me the opportunity to readdress it and show you guys more specifically how to do it. Now, forewarning, if you do want to do this properly, you're going to have to remove your bumper. It is possible to basically just, you know, yank it out there. But if you are watching this video, you probably don't want to do that, so this is how you do it in the most practical manner. Now, if you've never done it before, it may seem a little scary, but it's actually super, super, super easy to do, just some bolts, screws, and fasteners. And if you've done it before, you know it's a piece of cake. If you want to make it even easier for yourself, go ahead and get yourself one of these kits on Amazon. They're only like $6 and most of them have next day delivery. Um, you can search pry tool kit and then basically this will come up. You're mainly in it for this piece though. This piece is gonna be the difference maker. And if you only want this piece, I believe it's called the plastic automotive fastener removal tool, uh, something like that. If you just search those words, you'll find it. And you can also find stuff similar to this at most auto parts stores, but that's basically gonna be up to you how you wanna do it. And also this was a gift from my girlfriend Yvette, so thank you. But just a heads up, my car is old and used and it's been disassembled and reassembled tons of times. So not all the hardware is gonna be one to one, but the process is still gonna be the same. The first thing you're gonna do is gonna be pop the hood. You have your latch over here, you pop it up. You have one fastener here, one right here. You have three bolts, one right here, one right here, one right here. Um, and then there are four screws, I believe, that go there, but those are just screws and they're already off the line. Now for your fasteners right here, that's gonna be where this tool comes in handy the most. You can use a flathead screwdriver or some other pry tools, but this one's definitely gonna make it the easiest. Now in case you guys missed it in a previous video, I did replace a bunch of the fasteners because a lot of mine were old and brittle. Um, I replaced them for these ones right here that are a little bit more forgiving, a little bit easier to remove at the end of the day. Um, it's basically like these little pine tree ones right here. Um, if it'll focus. I um, got them at AutoZone for like $3 for a set of like 12. Uh, super inexpensive. And originally it was a two piece fastener where it's basically like this little opening, I guess, and one goes into the other. And as this one goes in, this one grips on. But nonetheless, for those, it's basically the same thing. You just start pulling out the one on the top first. Doesn't have to be all the way out. And then the one on the bottom. And this is basically why I wanted to replace it because I was gonna be addressing them from time to time and I wanted it to be a little easier um, and less likely to break. Now I wanna say these are the original bolts, but I could be wrong, and these are seven millimeters. And they just repeat the process. This one's a little tighter. And if you do have screws here in these little openings, they should just be Phillips heads. You'll definitely wanna keep your hardware in a bag. Then from here, you're gonna turn your steering wheel one direction and go to the opposite side's wheel well. So I turned the steering wheel to the right, going to the left side, and I already removed it just because it's a little difficult to see. You're not really gonna be able to see much. Um, but there are three fasteners that go right here. And it is a pretty difficult angle to get, but then let's see, you have one right there, one right there, and then one towards the bottom right there. And it's the same on both sides. You have three on the left, three on the right. And then from here, you have a handful of bolts underneath the car. Uh, mine were seven millimeter, but I can show you guys a little bit more specifically uh, once the bumper's off, because I know here it's kind of a hard angle to tell. Now from here, you can see it already has a good amount of give to it. Um, only thing holding it in position now are these little tabs that basically connect with the fender. So all you really want to do is get a little bit of pressure behind it. It doesn't need too, too much. Um, just kind of wiggle it out of there. And you'll start to see it starts sliding out a little bit. Just like that. Not too much effort. More just kind of guiding it out. And there you go. And they do the same thing over here on the other side. And it's loose. And you don't need to unplug anything, this is all you really need, because um, now you can get behind the emblem. Now you can see a little more specifically where the bolts go. You got one up there, one right there, five along the front. One, two, it's a little dark, but three right there, four and five. Then you have one right there, one right there. And those are just small bolts, so all you really need to do is just get a ratchet, get underneath the car, there you go. Now that the bumper's off, you have access to the back of the emblem. There's these little prongs and there's also a plate that holds it in position. Um, and you can actually separate those pretty easily, but because I actually have taken it off, 
I just opted out of mine. So my two tips for you, one, get some replacement fasteners. You can get some at the auto parts store, very, very inexpensive. They're separated by um, vehicle make and even where they go on the car. I got a bunch of them just so I could make the removal a lot easier if I'm removing any pieces. I very much suggest you guys do the same because pieces get old and brittle and they're a little more difficult to remove. And plus they're plastic and inexpensive, so if they break, no biggie. It's always nice to have those replacement parts. And then my next tip to get rid of the plate that actually holds the back in position. Uh, keep the prongs on there, but basically get rid of the plate because Mine actually is only held on with double-sided tape. It's basically how normal emblems are. A lot of other Ford vehicles only have the double-sided adhesive um, on the front end. Uh, I don't know why the Fusion specifically has a piece in the back, but that's what I would suggest, just removing it in case you do want to readdress it. Uh, maybe it's getting chipped like mine. But most emblems on cars only have the prongs to keep them in position and then the double-sided tape to hold them in position. And then this, for whatever reason, has that piece in the back. Um, but I don't have mine, so basically I took off my entire bumper just to show you guys how to do it. But not having that piece in the back makes it to where I could just remove it whenever I need to without actually having to go through the hassle of removing the entire bumper. Um, not that it's too difficult, but it's a lot easier whenever all you have to do is remove the emblem itself. But once you get the piece in the back removed, it's basically like a normal D-badge. Now you guys have seen me D-badge cars a ton on this channel, so I'll save you guys the hassle and I'll just cut to me actually removing the emblem. And there we go. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit so you could see, but you have your three prongs there that hold it in position. And that's plenty with the double-sided tape to keep it secure. I'm throwing in this little clip of when I did it for the rear, just so you can see a little bit more specifically what you're supposed to do. So the first thing to do is basically to take off the old adhesive. It's not very difficult. Honestly, it's pretty old and dried up anyway, so it should come off pretty simply. And if not, then this is, you could probably get a toothpick and just kind of pry the pieces off. All right, so it doesn't need to be perfect or anything as long as you have access to these little circular sections that's what holds the blue piece in place and those are basically flattened over the openings what you want to do is get a small screwdriver and pop those off so that you can take this blue piece off but once you finish that you basically pop them through and you take out the blue section then you'll get this piece off so these are the two main pieces but there is still this blue circle in the D and then the ring around the trim. There's this little section on the left and this area on the right that hold it in place, but more than that, there is these little ridges that you can actually push through and actually have a good amount of leverage with. So once you pop that piece off and this piece off, you can basically push the ring through and get it off. And that's basically it, just these four pieces, the housing, the lettering, the trim ring, and then the little D and the loop in the F. Now the next step is going to be to sand it. So what you wanna do is you wanna scuff it up just to basically help paint stick to it a little better. And you basically just wanna make sure that you can scuff it up to the point where it's actually a different color. This right here on the top is the original blue. And this is it scuffed. You can kind of see the difference here between the bottom section and the top. The bottom section I just sanded and you can see it's kind of smoked over. Whereas the top still has a reflective factor. You basically just want to make sure that it's scuffed up enough so that the paint doesn't just slide off. So we got our paints right here. We got our primer, our colors, and then our clear. And you're not going to need too much because the pieces themselves are pretty small. So one pan of paint should be plenty to cover it. I did ask you guys on Instagram though, a while ago actually, before Fusion Flood, what color I should paint the emblem. If I should get the uh, dark metallic gray similar to the rear and bring it up to the front. Or if I should do the white again. A lot of you guys voted for this color again, which I really like. So that's what we're going to do. And I was actually able to find the exact same can that I used for that one. Um, didn't really use too much. This probably has about two thirds of the paint still in it. So plenty here. So I got the primers done and from here we can add the color um, again it's gonna be gray and black all right guys so we got all the coats on and now we can go ahead and do the clear coats um, and thing I will say about the clear coats is that go ahead and be generous with it because you know you can prep it all you want but these emblems are gonna sit at the front end of the car so um, you know road debris is gonna be a factor especially if you drive as much as I do so they are likely to get chipped um, but you know a nice solid clear coat will definitely help make it less likely not saying it'll stop it entirely But it'll help for sure Now the tip for you guys because I forgot to tell you is that whenever you're actually sanding the pieces aside from the ring piece You can actually just grab the prongs on the back and run those across the sandpaper it makes sanding a lot easier All right, so we finished with all the coats on the pieces while we wait for them to dry I can actually show you guys how to prep the area um, for when we replace the emblem so First thing you want to do is you want to get rid of all the excess adhesive and if you're having a hard time you can spray some of this goo gun on there let it sit for a couple minutes then from there you can start peeling it off it actually makes it a lot easier so definitely recommend this it's only a couple bucks you can get it at most stores and once you've gotten all the adhesive off you're going to get some isopropyl alcohol and rub it down make sure it's clean this is going to remove all the residue and give the double-sided tape a nice surface to stick to and all the pieces this one's probably my favorite i was able to get that really really nice reflective shine on it 
Um, so yeah, you guys are right. This will look really good. Now once all the pieces have gotten to their suggested dry time, you can go ahead and get to reassembling. And main thing being, you don't want to actually force anything in position. You just kind of want to gently nudge it because you don't want to scratch any of the paint. And then this piece is the easiest because it just goes around the back. And there you go. Custom painted emblem. The last thing you're going to do before you put it back on the car, you want to glue up some of these sections. It doesn't have to be all of them, and it doesn't really have to be too many. Uh, more just a little bit of security for whenever you actually put the emblem back on so that it's not popping out. This is the glue that I'm going to use, and I like this one because when it dries, it dries in like a foam. Um, so it does still have a little bit of malleability to it. What I mean by that is you can press it and flatten it so that the emblem will still be flush on the bumper. And now for the easy part, which is just putting it back on the car. Uh, I got this 3M automotive tape right here, and all we're really gonna do is just position it, press it in, and you're good to go. As for the bumper, it's basically just doing everything you did in reverse, and you're basically good like that. Um, occasionally it does help if you do want to start with the upper half basically underneath the hood um, to just kind of secure it so it doesn't move around as much. Kind of use a preference but putting it back on is actually easier than taking it off. Okay I got the tape set. I'm gonna try doing this with one hand. And it has the prongs for a reason just kind of sink in there right. I did want to go for a subtly different color tone. Um, just super super subtle but basically the ring in the back is painted in the same um, metallic gray and this one I painted it black I kind of wanted to emphasize the gray itself and I felt like that did it a little bit better and I'm really really happy with the shine I was able to get on there let me know what you guys think uh, more than anything that's basically my uh, wanting to be cautious about road debris granted it's not gonna fix it uh, I drive this car a lot this is the front end so it's gonna get nicked from time to time which is all good but that is why I wanted to opt out of the back plate because say I want to address it I don't have to you know go the whole route of removing the bumper I can literally just treat the emblem as a normal emblem just a normal D badge job and remove it whether I want to change the color, touch up the paint, whatever it may be. And it's definitely super, super secure. I had had my emblem on like that for basically since I got the car. It was one of the first things I did. You know, it's been through uh, rain, snow, really windy weather. Basically, everything that's been thrown at it, it's held up great. So I'm really, really happy with that. I'm not worried about, you know, the durability at all. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am planning on doing a Q&A here in the near future. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. It can be car related. doesn't have to be car related. Um, I do have a lot of cool stuff planned for the Fusion for this year, and I'm really excited to show you guys. But nonetheless, hope you have a great wildcard weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.